Good afternoon from the Sunshine State. I'm Barry Duplissy, as always, here in beautiful Claremont, Florida, at the FSG Farm for the Drew Estate Barn Smoker. It is so excited to be here. We're here smoking fabulous cigars, drinking great drinks, staying hydrated with wonderful water. It's awesome. So I have a fantastic guest here today with me, and I'm so excited to be doing this joint special takes from El Oso Fumar Takes and Cigar Coop Primetime Special Edition. We got Will Cooper behind the camera, and of course, my amazing <laughs> guest today is Mr. Pedro Gomez of Drew Estate. Pedro, how are you doing today? Man, well, first of all, you know, thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank it you. is a privilege to be with you guys, and we, we are doing fabulous, bro. What a beautiful day to be alive, huh? It's a gorgeous day. I mean, you guys, you know, you, you couldn't have ordered a better day for this event. It's been a fabulous. We just got started just a few short hours ago, but we've already had a ton of fun. We've gone through the tour. We've planted some tobacco. Yes. Um, we have harvested some leaves. We've gone through the curing barn. It has just been a sensational time. We're, but we are doing so much more here this year, right? That's right. So we've got a fantastic event. You know, we talk about so much... Um, about you know in the industry and Coop and I have talked about this I had this discussion with a good friend of yours Fabian Ziegler who basically invented cigar events right and it's all about the evolution of the cigar event and you guys certainly have done that here today we've got coffee pairing you've got a nightclub going in the back you can almost yes. hear it from here absolutely man what before I get started with some of the the well this is all gonna be fun stuff but before I get started with some of the the deep dive stuff what has your been your favorite part today well, the favorite part today is to teach and share everything that takes place in the tobacco farm. Because the one thing that people don't acknowledge is the fact that when you're smoking a cigar, you have no clue what it's like to spend a day in a tobacco farm. And even though that this is an experiential event for everybody to have a good time, it is very interesting, as you said, taking, giving the people baby plants and let them transplant those plants into the tobacco fields. So right there it teach you and show you the love that we put into this. It is truly a labor of love. You know, we, we, and it, it, that is something that is echoed in each and every person that we talk to. You know, when you were over there at the, at the planting station and with, uh, with, of course, our amazing host this weekend, Jeff Borsowitz. Yes. This is his farm. That's right. And you guys have partnered with him for an amazing product in the FSG. And we're here That's celebrating right. FSG, of course. That's right. And the terrific partnership that Drew Estate has done. But the one thing I wanted to ask you, like, um, really specifically, Pedro, is that, can you imagine, that when you were growing up, you grew up in Esteli, Nicaragua, where, 100%, where, buddy. where Drew Estate calls home, but you have called home your entire life. Yes. You know, I'm from Esteli, Nicaragua. I grew up in a very um, hard times, because in the 80s, it was a civil war going on in Nicaragua. The country was devastated, you know. It was a lot of political conflicts. And, you know, until the 90s, that's when the cigar factories started to come back to Nicaragua. You got to put this in mind, you know. After the Cuban Revolution in 1959, a lot of cigar makers from Cuba immigrate to other countries. Some of them came to Tampa, Florida. Other people came to, to, went to Miami. Other people went to Dominican. Other people went to Honduras. Some people went to Nicaragua. Matter of fact, the first cigar factory in Nicaragua is Hoya de Nicaragua. And it was found by two Cuban guys, you know. And then from there, other pioneers from the industry, like Jose Orlando, uh, uh, Jose Orlando Padron, rest in peace, you know. Gilberto Oliva, rest in peace as well, you know. You got uh, Nelson Placencia and every godfather, if you can call it, from the cigar industry came to Nicaragua that was uh, during the 70s, you know. And then in 1979, we got the popular revolution that afterwards became a civil revolution. So the thing is this, come back to the story of cigars, the people, the cigar makers start to come back to Nicaragua because during the 80s, everybody left the country, including Padron, everybody. Because uh, people were, you know, running from the war, running from all the stuff that were happening in Nicaragua. So it happens I was born in 1984. So in the 90s, when we first got the democratic elections, 
that's when those cigar makers start to come back because they realize that the soil from Nicaragua was the best soil, you know. But at that time, you know, it was just the early baby steps of the Nicaragua cigar industry. So me, growing up in Nicaragua, I started to see cigar factories here and there. We kind of knew the locals that a lot of people were working in there making cigars. But I never imagined that it would be part of this beautiful industry. So you were growing up, and that's something that we'll talk about in just a second. But your first trade was not tobacco. Right. You actually, <laughs> you actually made saddles. That's right. You were a yes. Saddle maker. So, as a child, making saddles because you started really young. Right. You you were out there so helping support your family. Right. Doing what you could do, making beautiful saddles. Right. If we could look back for a moment Absolutely. and talk to that wonderful boy that was making saddles to help support his family. <laughs> Could you ever imagine at that time that you would be here today talking about the wonderful tobacco industry, working with your incredible partners at Drew Estate and Jeff Borsowitz and everybody here? Wow, man. You just touched me with that question, man. Because, you know, in life, everything goes so fast that everybody's in the fast lane, you know, making things happen, moving forward, you know. But thinking back, it is impressive to say, you know, and to acknowledge how good God is. So I'm very grateful to God, very grateful to life as himself, you know, and the opportunities only comes in a lifetime. So the fact that I'm here sharing with you guys and sharing what we make, handmade, the stuff that we make by hand in Nicaragua is mind-blowing for me. So you got me on that question. <laughs> it, wow. it, it is mind-blowing because there, you know, this is, this is, for Drew Estate, for Pedro Gomez, for Bear Duplissy, for Will Cooper behind the camera. Right. It's been a journey for all of us. That's right. And, it, and it's the journey that you really find the amazing relationships that we have built today. That's right. We would have not met. We would not know all the people here, the wonderful fans, everybody that here is here to celebrate not just Drew Estate. Right. But the wonderful art of tobacco. That's right. And Coop and I were talking about this when we were planting those plants that you gave us in the field mm -hmm. today. And one of the things that I said, and I was looking at the leaf that I just harvested, and I said, I said to myself, and I said it out loud, and Coop caught me, and I said, how could anyone, how could anyone hate this? This is beautiful. That's right. And Coop says to me, he's like, everybody's happy. Right. Everybody's happy. Now, when I think of you mm -hmm. and I think of the amazing work that you do for this company, that is a word that comes to mind wow. is happiness and joy. That is something that you exude. And I don't think I've ever seen you without a smile on your face. <laughs> what is it about this? What is it about this industry or what is it about your work that brings you so much joy? Well, you know, one thing that I can tell you, when it comes to cigars, cigars in general is the most misunderstood hobby out there. But once you start to realize and once you find the cigar that you like, the great people that you're going to meet, that's what make it beautiful. And this one right here is one, the, is one of the most equalizer out there because it doesn't matter who you are. At the end of the day, you are enjoying a cigar that fits your palate, that really take you back and count your blessings. Because you're going to put 45 minutes to one hour smoking something that you're going to enjoy. And as I always say, every day is a good day to smoke a good cigar. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you say it's the, the ultimate equalizer because it truly is. Here we are sitting and we're looking at all of our friends here right. celebrating Drew Estate, celebrating right. Jeff Borsowitz here at the FSG Farm in Claremont, Florida. And there are people, men women from all walks of life their children running around playing that's right and it is absolutely a fantastic fantastic a fantastic sight to see right. it's great it's beautiful that's right you know and the first and the, the thing about it how the barn smoker was born that was jonathan's uh, jonathan's real idea so one day he said you know what man we should do an um, experiential event in a tobacco farm so the first barn smoker was in kentucky in Hankinsville, Kentucky. When he came out with the idea in those executive meetings, those guys in that time were like, oh man, you're, you're losing your mind. Who the hell is gonna go in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky 
for uh, experientially than a tobacco farm. But Jonathan understood that cigars and everything in life is based on experience. So the stuff that we did in Nicaragua with the Cigar Safari, where we, where we were bringing people from all over the country, retailers and consumers to come to Nicaragua for four days and three nights, the best, one of the best cigars experience in this industry, we knew that this thing and this business runs through our experience. So having everybody right here in Clearmont, Florida, people from all walks of life coming to celebrate, not used to celebrate, by, but to learn. How much does it take to work with that little tobacco seed, man? Those little tobacco seeds are the same size of mustard seed. You know, microscopic, better, yes. Microscopic. But from those microscopic little things, which could be the simple things in life, that's when you realize how beautiful life is, you know? Because you, we got this. We talk about the experience of events like today, the Drew Estate Barn Smoker, bringing people in, getting to experience what folks were experiencing on these safaris. You you know, you know, actually hosted these tours for a long time. Do you right. still do that? Well, you know, it was a time when I started to, to, to run the Cigar Safari Tours. That was back in 2008. We were, you know, first time bringing groups to Nicaragua. And basically at that time, Jonathan Drew was the one giving the tours. Uh, other executives from the company like Nick Melillo, Steve Sack, that nowadays they run their own cigar factory, they were giving the tours. Me, I was the guy working behind the curtains, making sure that everything was running properly, you know? And then, but I, at the same time, I was learning from them. And way before I started to run Cigar Safari, I had experience in the factory running different department because I used to be the operation manager assistant. But way before I used to be the operation manager assistant, I was the running boy. Everything that they were needing, you know, we need a chauffeur, yeah, call Pedro. We need some lunch, yeah, call Pedro. Hey, we need some coffee, yeah, ask Pedro to go and get it. And I was happily doing it because, you know, it was the first time for me having a formal job. I spent like almost 10 years making saddle for horses and making saddles in Nicaragua is a very tough way to make a living. I wasn't making a living. I was just surviving, you know, making one day at a time. So being with an American company and seeing how much appreciation those guys have for people that work hard and everything that they do is for the good of the company, I say this is the place to be. And I bet you had that same smile that you have on your face now. I bet you had it then, too. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So you talk about that first barn smoker in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Right. And there were doubts. There, there were, were doubts. concerns. The people are not going to show up, you know. What was your What was your reaction when you showed up and it was something like this? Oh, my God. Well, it was. I was very impressed. You know, one thing that Drew Estate has, we got a very good group of people that follows Drew Estate everywhere. People see Drew Estate as a cold brand. Cold brand is the same thing as you see Apple, you know? You got all the computer brands up there, but everybody you shoot for Apple, you know? They're hardcore people. You know, yeah, hard, it's something that you believe, something that you're familiar with it. So the same thing comes with Cigar, you know? So a lot of people, we got the support from them to do an event like that because at the end of the day, you can throw a badass event but if people don't show up, it's not an event. It's like throwing the greatest party. If you don't have people, that is not a party, you know what I mean? So when it comes to this one, we not we did the, the, the Kentucky one. Nowadays, we got five different barn smokers that we do once a year. So the first one is the Florida one, the Florida barn smoker. Then we got the Pennsylvania barn smoker, Connecticut barn smoker, Kentucky, and then we got Louisiana, right in November. So at the end of the day, you know, we got about 800 people that come to, the, to, to this event. So what we provide to the people that come to the barn smoker, which is, you better listen to me crisply and clearly. I know my, my Tony Montana accent just comes out of the blue, <laughs> but I will tell you something. If you want to experience the best time of your life when it comes to cigars, I know that you go, you love to go to your local lounge, go and solve the world problem, but you gotta come here and see where the love of the leaf come from. So when it comes to this, you come to the Florida barn smoker or any of the barn smoker that we do, you're gonna need around 800 people from everywhere not just from florida we got people from hawaii we got people from new york we got people from california chicago you name it we got it 
Then top of that, we got great, great food. The food that we have today, it was amazing. We also have a great selection of fine spirits, bro. Good drinks, you know. Spirit is a very fancy word for me, but we got whiskey, rum, vodka, beers, and everything. Top of that, you got the greatest selection of cigars from Drew Estate. If, it's not, if this is not good enough for you, we got activations. The activation that we are having today, we got the Underground activation, the Tabaco Special activation, the Herrera Estelia activation, the Acid Cigar activation. So activation is like you come to us, show us the ticket, we give you something, and we, you're going to trade your ticket with a cigar, but you're going to keep the number of that ticket. We're going to give you something at the end of the event, something very nice that we're raffling off. Another thing that we do is that's to raise the awareness, and I'm very proud to tell you, tell you this. We do the collaboration with Cigar for Warriors, which is Great a non-profit organization. organization where they ra raise the awareness. They raise money and collect cigars through donations, and then they ship those cigars to deploy soldiers from every branch from the United States, the Army, the Navy, Help me with this. Air Force, one. Marine Corps, Coast Guard, everybody. That's right. And we send it to them. Because while we are here enjoying a cigar, they are protecting the freedom of this beautiful country. Absolutely. I'm not from here, but I'm enjoying the freedom of this country. But one thing that I can tell you is that freedom doesn't come free. You yeah. got to pay the ultimate price. For all the soldiers that have been given their life, for us to be here, God bless their soul. I, I have nothing to add to that. That's absolutely beautiful. And you, you talk about the amazing. We've talked about the amazing people and everything that are here. And you're not the only. You're not the only person. You talked. To, you mentioned Jonathan Drew. I mentioned Fabian Ziegler. Right. Willie Herrera is here. Right. There are so many great people from Drew Estate. You know the thing about this, the traditional cigar event that you go to at your brick and mortar, and they're fabulous. You guys put on a terrific event. You hosted a recent one at the shop that I work at, and it was terrific. But it's got one or two. You got one guy or two guys from the company, and those are great. This is an opportunity to not meet one, not meet two, but meet several of the That's amazing right. people that make Drew Estate happen. Right. You know, one thing that I can add to that is that every cigar has a story. Every company has a humble story. Everybody starts small, but at the end of the day, if you put your heart into it, your passion will roll with it. So what Jonathan Drew has created with this, it is impressive. The American dream that he has been living with Drew Stay, we have had the opportunity to get a little piece of it. The fact that you can meet people from everywhere, that's the world thing that we can uh, get it in life. Because if that money doesn't count, people are not going to remember you how much money you got. People are going to remember you how kind and nice you were with people. If you can have that opportunity, you know, to, to, to be up there, you know, sharing something for us is the best because cigars is a very social thing, you know. Cigars is way more social than liquor and anything out there because you meet people from everywhere, cool people, you know. And every day you learn something new. Absolutely. The thing about this industry is, again, I mentioned earlier the journey that we all take. And I talked to you a little bit about this before we started today. And I said, you and I have one similarity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you and I both did not grow up in tobacco. Right. Our family, you know, our fathers didn't grow tobacco. Our fathers didn't make cigars. Our family did not come from the cigar industry. But this was an acquired love, an acquired passion that you and I both share. Now you more so than I <laughs> have done a lot more with your time than mine. <laughs> but what does it mean to you to carry on and stand on the foundation that the legacy of the people that you mentioned, Padron, Placencia, right. all those fabulous people, and of course, one of our hosts today, Jonathan Drew. Right. What does it mean to take that load and catapult it to the next level, my to the next man. generation? Yes. For my people in Nicaragua, I'm gonna take out my hat. Because being from, being born and raised in Nicaragua, and thousands of people that work in the tobacco fields, thousands of people that work in the boxes, the factories that made the boxes, 
thousands of people that work in the cigar factory, it is a honor for me to represent them here in the United States. So to me, this is my passion. I do it with a lot of respect. I really love what I do, and God is my witness. This is something that I never dream of. So the legacy that the pianos in Nicaragua, like you mentioned, you know, Jose Orlando Padron, uh, Gilberto Oliva, Nesto Placencia. I mean, if I start to mention their name, I'm not going to finish it up yeah. today, you know, <laughs> because we got so many factories up there. But I mean, pe the people up there, you know, Rocky Patel, uh, My Father Cigars, you know, Don Pepin Garcia, uh, everybody, bro, you know, Nick Perdomo, Joya de Nicaragua. Uh, do if I go name by we name, go we, days and days. We, absolutely, you know, there's so Roman many. Craft, you know, uh, Nick Melillo, Steve Saga. Everybody has been adding something, and they have been adding something so beautiful because they have been working so hard to make good cigars. It's not just Drew Stay; it's all of them to make Nicaraguan cigar one of the hardest goddamn cigar in the business right now. To the point that other companies from other countries. They use the Nicaragua name as a marketing bullet point for people to buy. Which we don't have nothing against it. It's so good because at the end of the day, everybody wins, you know. It's good to have variety of products for the people to try. You know, it's not just one cigar and one cigar company. It's everybody that is adding something, you know. And nowadays, the Nicaragua is in the spotlight of not just making good cigars, blending great cigars. But, not, uh, but also growing one of the best tobacco up there. Everybody's shooting for the Nicaraguan tobacco, and we have been very blessed with the soil and the knowledge and the experience of those people that spend up there day, day after day. We have been hanging out here for, you know, half a day, and people say, oh my God, it's so hot. Well, go and ask those people what it's like a, a, a <laughs> life in a tobacco farm, and you got to make a living out of it. God bless them, you know, God bless their soul. It is truly a labor of love. And it is so, it is such a privilege. It is such an honor, Pedro, to sit here, talk about your story. And I can't think of another person that is more fitting to represent the great people that you just mentioned, the people that we don't see. Right, the, the people that we don't see. The, the wonderful people that we've talked about today. That's right. Are just some of the amazing folks. There's hundreds of thousands of people in the fields rolling right. these cigars, That's right. sorting everything, everything, man, including the beautiful labels that go on this. Everything right. is meticulously done by the wonderful people. Some of the wonderful people that you represent, right. the people of Nicaragua. It is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely. I cannot thank you enough for your time today. No, oh, man, it is amazing, bro. Thank you so much for sharing your part of your story, sharing the story of Drew Estate, sharing a cigar with me. That's right, and. Uh, it just means the world to me. We thank you everyone out there for all your likes, your shares, comments. If you ever have an opportunity to come to a barn smoking event, do it. It's worth it. And if you next time Pedro comes to your town That's for right. a cigar event, come and shake this man's That's hand right. and give him a smile because he'll give you one right back. For everyone out there, for Will Cooper behind the camera, right? Cigar Coop Prime Time. El Oso Fumar takes. I'm Barry Duplissy. He's Pedro Gomez. Yes. Drew Estate Barn Smoker. So before, on Florida. Before we close this one up, I just want to encourage everybody to go to YouTube, go to Drew Estate page, go to every social media from Drew Estate because what we are doing now, we are doing a travel show. We are a travel show. Yes. Oh, my goodness. No, no. I just want to give you a highlight right here. So we just launched the Miami one. It's in, out there in the social media. The thing that we are doing, we are taking the cigar experience to the next level. So I'm hitting every city in the United States where we're gonna be combining the greatest food, the cuisine food from that city, good drinks, good cigars, the culture and the amazing people from those places. Taking the people, that's yes. what it is. Go, go to everything. the distance with Pedro. Check that out. Absolutely, <laughs> do it. From Claremont, Florida at FEMSG yes. Farm, I'm Barry Duplissy, Pedro Gomez, Will Cooper. We'll see you next time. Peace, there you go.